We here at the ID Tech X with uh, Nicola Labs. So who are you? My name is uh, Will Zell and I'm a uh, founder and the CEO of Nicola Labs. So Nicola Labs, what's the name about? Yeah, so obviously uh, we love Nikola Tesla. Um, if uh, you read Nikola Tesla's autobiography, he listed 11 ways in which his technology would revolutionize the world. Uh, interestingly enough, 10 of those 11 ways have come to pass. The only one that hasn't is wireless power really making its way into being real and meaningful. And so uh, we're a wireless power company, uh, commercialized out of Ohio State University. And uh, we, we felt that it was uh, a good thing to do to honor the one of the pioneers in wireless power technology. So this is wireless power? Yes, yeah, this is But wireless. is it different from like a Qi charger or something else? Yeah, it's significantly different from, uh, from any other uh, uh, solution that's out there as far as the near field inductive or, or magnetic resonance. So we are uh, good at capturing RF energy and converting it into direct current power. So it's uh, RF to DC. Uh, across multiple modes of application. So what is this, what are, you, what are you showing here? Yeah, so this is actually the first application of our technology, which is a case that harvests energy that's transmitted from the phone itself. And so you have in any given phone a uh, antenna that are transmitting over distance, whether to uh, communicate with a Wi-Fi router or with a cell tower. Um, because of the small antenna transmitting over long distance, they are transmitting in almost an omnidirectional pattern. So Dr. Chi Chi Chen, who is the inventor of the technology um, and also uh, an expert when it comes to antenna design, built this system that captures some of the radio frequency energy uh, that is not needed, if you will, for communication purposes. So it captures the RF, it converts it into direct current without negatively impacting the transmission power and sensitivity of the, of, the, of the device. How do you make sure that it doesn't neg negatively impact the transmission and the connectivity? Yeah. So Wi-Fi, uh, 4G, yeah, 3G, so, what yep. is it? Yeah, so we'll do uh, uh, multiple bands, the LT and also the, the Wi-Fi bands. So we ran tests um, measuring the, the data rate transmission as the um, phone is being used. But even more importantly, um, we had uh, that cl claim validated by SETCOM. Um, and so they performed tests with the uh, technology and uh, validated our, our uh, claim in and around of being able to harvest RF without negatively impacting the quality. So this is a case for the iPhone? Yeah, so this is the case for the uh, iPhone, uh, yes, the iPhone 6 success. So it, it goes in there and then yeah. what happens? So you would put it in here, uh, it just slides in like anything else and you put a, a, a clip of top on onto it and uh, then you use it. So the uh, unlike battery cases where you have to recharge the battery, you have to remember to turn the battery on, turn it off, um, the case is actually very, very passive. So it's activated by the phone's own transmission and then shuts off when the, uh, the phone is, is done transmitting. So the, the basic value is a person can go throughout their day uh, with the case on it, it's a pr protective case as well, and uh, receive extra battery life through a recycling uh, system for their phone. I mean, if you think about it from a, the, the perspective of it's recycling unused energy, wasted energy, um, that's that's ultimately what it's doing. So there's a billion smartphones sold every year now. Yeah. And they're just all they're wasting energy. It's not so. I, and I, I say I use the term wasting energy kind of you know delicately because the it's not a design flaw of the antenna. It's a it's a matter of physics, right? If you had a big antenna that was going over a uh, short distance, you could really do a, a focused transmission. But in these cases of phones, you have very small devices, very small antenna that have to transmit over far distances. So to in order, in order to, um, to establish good communication, the device company doesn't know how the orientation is going to be, um, how you're going to be uh, holding your phone, where you're going to be in, in relation to the communications network. So they have to transmit omnidirectionally. As a consequence of that, in, in just the, the intended design, there's basically a reflective near field RF um, that is also created, and that's, that's what we capture. So it's not wasted energy per se, that it's, again, I use that delicately. It's unused. It's, it's, it's unused, it's there that to be captured and recycled. Uh, while still enabling the, the user to have the same experience as far as no drop calls, no slower data rates. It's so how much power are you capturing? Um, so so over so it, it captures and um, uh, 
and then kind of trickle charges and pulse charges that RF back into and it converts it to DC and then back into the phone. So over the course of, of a day, it, it kind of depends on how a person uses their phone. But we've been able to consistently prove that up to 30% extra time can be, be given. Um, and there's still a lot that we're actually learning about this technology and how it, it inter interacts with the, uh, with the phone itself and the power management system of the phone. Um, and there is some variability in the way how, how people use it. But we're, we're going through actually another round of user tests right now and, um, and taking all that data, learning more, and then hopefully uh, driving this product to market. So how about here the IT Tech X show? Did you speak with some uh, potential partners? And how about putting this in the phone? Does that make any sense? Yeah, so it makes sense to um, uh, put into into the phone uh, because actually there is a lot what of. What would it be arm. in the phone? So you would ultimately have it in a particular relationship to the where the antenna location is in the phone itself, it which changes from... thickness? Does it add something? No, it, it, it shouldn't have to, but of, of course the biggest challenge with integrating into a device is cost and real estate available, right? So even the most minimal thickness, if you will, is still <laughs> thickness, right? So the conversations that we've had with, with uh, some of the device manufacturers that are out there um, are, you know, we have to drive the technology, obviously the cost of it down further, um, and it can't take up much space, and ultimately it's got to be able to work um, uh, across bands, really across the world. So is it possible for it to be integrated into to, um, devices? Yes, uh, that's our, our obviously our eventual goal with it. Um, we'll see though, it's like anything else, it's a journey, right? It's a process to get there. It's too bad you can't ask Tesla for any advice on how to do it, right? Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> Yeah. So what, what kind of other things could you be doing, spin-offs out of this? Yeah, so the, if you look at the kind of core technology, the core engine behind um, this application, it is the efficient conversion of RF to DC. So when you're, and what, part of the reason we're here at ID TechX is you have a, a significant number of wearable uh, technology companies, all kinds of IoT related uh, companies, and, and power is a huge problem, right? We have, we have these 21st century electronic devices made for mobility, um, and yet we don't have really good 21st century powering solutions for them. And so that's what Nikola Labs is creating, and we're using our core RF to DC engine to accomplish just that. And uh, uh, where are you based? Uh, we're based in the great state of Ohio. Uh, the technology was invented at The Ohio State University. Uh, we launched as a startup company last October and uh, are building. There are a lot of great things happening in Columbus, Ohio, really across the state. Uh, so we're really proud to, to build this company in, in the state of Ohio. So what do you think about this ID Tech X show? Do oh, you have been, some conversations? Yeah no, yeah, no, it's been great, actually. I mean, it's, you know, the as a startup, we're just now beginning to build relationships with potential customers. Um, uh, being in an environment like this where there are so many around uh, is great. So I think the ID Tech X uh, team did a great job of organizing the event. The food was amazing, so that's always good. Um, and no, we, we nothing but a, a great opportunity. want to thank Qualcomm. So uh, we're actually in the uh, launch pad, um, which is uh, um, uh, sponsored by Qualcomm and it's for startup companies basically. So really want to thank them for uh, enabling this opportunity for us. Cool, looking forward to see this in the Nexus. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're, uh, hope we'll hopefully be there soon.